Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Keep your feet up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. In this video, we'll talk about the 2020 BET Awards celebrating not only 40 years as a network, but 20 years when it comes to BET Award Special. Specials. Now we'll talk about the host, Amanda Seals, the production, how COVID-19 affected the production and the show and what to expect in the future. That's all coming up next. Before we talk about the show, I have to talk about the hostess with the mostest, Miss Amanda Seals. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Amanda, she is a creative brain that wears several creative hats. She was a previous radio show host. She's an activist. She's a comedian. She's an author. So many things. She was able to prove that on a drop of a dime, she has that talent to read off a teleprompter, to be prepared and have the readiness to carry an entire show. So that was a good selection. I remember on Instagram, when it was announced that she would be the host, many people were just like, why her? And why did they pick Amanda Seals? And I don't get it. And I just really found that conflicting because she is the type of person that you know on a drop of a dime, especially when it comes to quick production changes, that she can blend. She's a chameleon. She's someone that can handle it. And I feel that under the circumstances with COVID, under the circumstances with production, what she had, being familiar with the camera, being able to read a teleprompter, I thought that that was a very good match. And I think that she did a really good job. You could tell that throughout the entire show that there were green screen shots. And when I saw it, I immediately thought in my mind, people are going to go in and well in on this green screen sort of imaging that looked pixelated. It wasn't quite clear. And I already went through my mind. I hope people don't go too much in on the comments and down the entire thing. I really want people to open their eyes of the circumstances that she had to deal with in order to host such a big show and I think she did a really good job dealing with green screen and I really think that the green screen looked a certain way due to the production access that she had. We learned at the end of the show that she had a green screen set up in her home. When it comes to production, when you have green screen, if the lighting is different and the film chunk that you've recorded doesn't blend when they master its contents, it can look off. I've even tried on my YouTube channel to do a green screen and if the lighting isn't right, it won't really reflect well and communicate well with your audience. So I didn't even post it. I said green screen's not for me. Either I'm not understanding how to do it or there are some things behind the scenes I need to work out. It seems that since there was nobody there of that caliber at her home to say we need more lighting here, here, here in order to kind of reflect a better production-esque. And you could see that because when we saw other per performances, it was very clear, and very beautiful, and other people used green screen. And we saw that a lot. So I really think it had a lot to do with the equipment that she had access to at home. But being able to host such a big show, maybe drop of a dime, it was probably scheduled for her to actually be on stage and not at home because you have to remember, it's an award show. This is planned months ahead before we actually see the entire show all together, plan, production, lighting, everything. So I give her kudos under the circumstances and everything that's going on that she tried to pull out a lot of her comedy, skits, etc., bringing her talents to keep it going and with the fluidity. I thought she did a very good job in providing that between each sequence of performances. So good job, Amanda. I look forward to seeing you host other things in the future is what you do best is what you've proven that you can do in your shows and other television shows so keep it up i really do admire that you kept it pushing you kept it going despite the circumstances so let's talk about the production 
of the BET Awards. I kind of sprinkled on a little bit what I wanted to talk about next is production. With this change of COVID-19, it really, really flipped the lid on how this entire show was going to go. I can only imagine the entire team sitting down saying, how are we going to do this show? Not only following WHO and CDC parameters and regulations to keep everybody safe, but how can we give good performances and show this talent that we have booked and things that we're going to do? How are we going to do with to deal with this you have to think about timing schedules how things have changed what artists can do what so I many think about the communication and the back and forth of all these different people and all of these different managers that is a lot and the fact that they were able to pull that together i thought was absolutely amazing when amanda had her segues we saw the backdrops of teen summit video soul rap city the basement all of those memories and all of the shows in the past that bet has provided us with i will say i did like the intro how it brought that attention more concerning the movement, concerning the protest, everything that has to do with us. Initially, I thought I've, it's been beaten to my brain about what's been going on. Can we take a break and just focus on the art? But if you really think about it, that really wouldn't be smart to do that. You want to engage and you want those artists to be able to express emotionally what's going on and how that correlates with Black Lives Matter, whether you agree with it or not. Some artists chose to keep that out and just did the performance. And some artists wanted to incorporate that with their performance and I thought that was nice. The key point with everything is that I did enjoy this new format. I must admit, I wasn't bothered at the fact that there wasn't an audience. Yes, that energy was lacking. There's nothing like the audience giving their cheers and amping up the artists and clapping. You can't replace that. You can't replace the energy of an audience. Now, most people would say, why do this now? Why not just wait until everybody is ready to perform? Well, there's a lot of uncertainty with this pandemic and you have to keep everybody safe. You don't want to say, let's wait till the fall, but just like the industry, just like songs, just like performances, your audience can get bored and very forgetful. In this technical world that we live in, when it's hot, it's hot. You have to strike while the iron is hot. You have to strike when the song is popular and you can't wait. It wouldn't make any sense to have a 2021 awards ceremony for stuff that went on at the end caps of 2019 and through 2020. It just wouldn't make any sense and it wouldn't feel fresh. So it was necessary to have an award show to wait and just think about when the pandemic is going to be best for everyone would have been a terrible decision. So making the choice to have an award show was necessary and under the circumstances I do agree and I like the fact that they did have this award show. I do like the fact that the artists were allowed to have a set and to perform. We haven't seen in quite a while that relaxed setting of an artist just being able to take their time and be creative without an interference of maybe some technical issues if they needed to reshoot or redo that option was there the crowd mistakes things that are in between skits timing commercials all of that so a lot of the pre-recorded pre-produced situations and performances was a wonderful idea. It reminded me of when BET, VH1, all of the MTV would play music videos. 
it reminded me of how much I missed that and actually seeing that and the artists being able to pour their hearts out. I miss MTV Unplugged. I miss when BET would just have those sporadic sessions and time slots of just videos playing all day. We haven't seen that in a while. So when I actually got to see the artists perform and have a good time, yes, it was weird not having the audience in interaction and hearing them, but it did bring back memories of saying, wow, these are music television networks. I miss seeing music videos with, what's the word, reality television and all of these scripted shows. Networks started to pull back because you got to think that's budgeting. With reality TV, there's not a script technically, and they can just shoot, pay, the individuals that are involved and not actors because of course there's a different pay grade and things that are going on with actors you got to think about sag and all this other stuff so with time networks started that were music based started to play less videos and give us more shows it did remind me that wow we need those shows back we need video soul we need teen summit we need that and it really changed and shifted my energy and saying, man, BET should really think about bringing it back and allowing artists to really show their stamina, their talent, and maybe have some performances that are offset and production based and maybe some that are live. They have done that in the past, but of course this entire show was based upon keeping all of the artists safe. Now I will give major kudos to BET in giving this a shot. If you paid attention with the performances, they followed guidelines very well. With each production and each artist, if they were dancing and if there was more than five individuals, they were spaced six feet apart or even more from each other. And they were wearing masks. They did it so well, you thought it was just a fashion statement and they're wearing it to perform. No, 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 no. They were all spaced apart. They all had their distances. And it's something that you don't pick up unless you're really paying attention. When it was three people, if they didn't have their mask on, they were spaces apart. If it were five or plus, they were far apart, they had their mask on, so it was really good. So wow, major kudos with that. A lot and a lot of planning and making sure that everybody is safe. You can't take a risk, you have to be careful. I really, really like that. Rewatch each performance and notice that, how everybody is a good distance away, and if they did have dancers, that they were, covered and they had PPEs on and everybody was safe. Major kudos to me, I think, not to me, <laughs> major kudos to what, to artists that I thought that did a really good job. With Megan Thee Stallion, with her being such a new artist when it comes to performing in front of a very big production, I think she did really, really well. She has time to grow. She's showing her stamina as an artist, and you could tell that that was a challenge for her. The dancing, remembering her cues, the spots, the location. So it was great. Of course, we have Chloe and Hallie. Everyone did a, an amazing job. It was refreshing to see Usher. It was refreshing to see him in his element. He's best live. He is a performer. He is an entertainer. Um, and I love that. It's hard for me to say which performance that I, uh, that I enjoyed the most because I think everyone did a really, really good job. Really, really good job. And rewatched the show and noticed how they followed those parameters to keep everybody safe. Of course, it was very frustrating. I know for a lot of people that we really didn't get to do that true dedication to a lot of things. People that have passed away. There, Of course, there were slideshows and things like that that I just thought about it like, wow, so many people have passed away from the end cap of 2019 and 2020. Diane Carroll, uh, Johnny Witherspoon, Kobe, so many people. As they were showing all of the photos, I thought, wow, like, I keep forgetting how many people are gone and that we have lost. It just blew me away as they just kept showing name after name after name. Um, but what can you do in these times is just do the best that you can. And I think this award ceremony 
did just that. They did what they could at its best, which I give a good rating for. A lot of, I haven't seen anybody else's review on YouTube. I just wanted to shoot this and give my opinion. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will say, oh, that little bootleg and that, and that, and that green screen. And that. You have to consider everything that's going on with filming getting your footage to specific people so it can air that is a lot it's a lot of me just editing this video on youtube and putting it up so i can only imagine the editing and sending and maybe an artist say you know i don't like that one let me send you another one like deadlines a lot uh shouts out to beyonce for getting the 2020 humanitarian award it means a lot for artists to give back so i thought that was very beautiful and also bobby johnson his contribution to bet as a network as a whole and you know he had donnie simpson you know give his give his thoughts about you know bet you know his eyes are always <laughs> his eyes are just little but i thought it was beautiful for him, for him to talk about and remind us in saying that we weren't seeing ourselves on television. We weren't seeing our music on TV. If MTV wasn't playing Michael Jackson, we really wouldn't see us. So his vision and him being a maverick to this idea in the network was great. I'm glad that they talked about that. It's a downer that there really wasn't a bigger celebration because of course of the circumstances and things that are going on. And it was probably a major bummer to a lot of people like, oh, we had this plan and we had this set and we had the stage this way and we can't do it now. And you know, I know there was probably a lot of disappointment artists that were having their big moment their big performance the first time being on a major network on an award show so i'm pretty sure all of that happened but they made the decision which i agree with to keep it going and to do something so for them not to do anything would have been a major fail because you want to stay current and you want to let people know that hey we can't do this but at least let's try our best to make it work and to make it happen I think with that decision, it was a good one. When it comes to what to expect in the future, I wanted to stand up and clap when BET talked about country music because a lot of people forget that we are the pioneers of country music. Now I'm from Texas and I love my country and I love, I love everything, but country is R&B with a twang. We created it, we did it. Do your history about country music. But I thought it was so great that that is that addition and things to look forward to on BET and with the BET Awards. They featured someone to sing their country music. And that's something that I feel BET should have been sharing a long time ago, but you know the industry, they wanna sugarcoat it and whitewash it as if it is a white genre, which it is not. It is a universal genre, and black people should be given that kudos to be expressive and to sing country music in the industry. Because what they'll do is that even though your music has that country feel, they'll still categorize you as R&B. They'll still categorize you in a different area. We see that with many artists and a lot of people that are black that do country music get very frustrated and they just transition into R&B knowing that wholeheartedly that they want to do country. A good example of that is uh, artist Kiki Wyatt. She loves country, but her R&B is at a pivot because the industry won't allow her to do that good country music that she loves, that she enjoys. So a lot of artists just get frustrated and they say, well, I'd rather just have my song out anywhere rather than not be heard at all. But it was wonderful seeing that good country performance at the end and I thought it was wonderful. The band, the production, everything. And I look forward to seeing more country performances on BET. Big round of applause to BET for doing that. That was great. And last but not least, I thought it was wonderful that they acknowledged Nicholas Johnson. He is the first black Valid Victorian of Princeton. It's been 274 years since they've had anybody that was black that was a valid Victorian. And it showed that they are moving forward and recognizing that it's time to let us go forward. Let us be our best. Don't hold us back with this 
systemic racism and systematic racism. Let us be great. And the fact that he is the first valedictorian was ama amazing. And I love that Proctor and, Ga and Gamble had their shine their light segment to bring awareness because a lot of people didn't know about that moment in history that he is the first. So that was completely awesome. Let me know what you think about my review of the BET Awards. There were so many different artists and I thought it was great. I did think that Jennifer Hudson did a good good job of her performance. It gave us a kind of gateway sneak, sneak idea of what to expect of the Respect movie that's coming out, of course, to the inimitable Aretha Franklin and her life and documenting um, what an impact she's had uh, with our culture. Um, and I cannot say what I think the best performance was because it was all great and it was different. And I think that they did a wonderful job. With the circumstances, with everything that was going on, you could tell that they were pressed for time and making it happen. So I don't want to give it a rating like 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, because this has never been done before, right? This has happened to where complete production sets have been shut down and you have to make do with what you have. This has not happened before. This is history. And with everything going on, I think they did a very wonderful job. Could things have been better? Could sets have been better? Of course, yeah. Could green screen have been better? Yes, of course. But if you think about the dynamic of the people involved, the production involved, lighting, who has this, who has that, it's 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 a lot it's a lot to crunch time and then you have deadlines and you can't let things go by too fast because then your audience will get bored and become uninterested but it was refreshing to see performances on television for them to give us the energy of videos which i think bet please bring that back please let it be a music television uh, channel but it is black entertainment so I agree that BET's broadening their being shows and music, but the platform is the music and bringing us those videos. But times are changing. Hopefully they'll bring back more talk shows, bring Teen Summit back, where there are more discussions about what affects our, our adolescent individuals, young children, there's just so much more. There's only so much you can do on each network, and there's only so much more that the board of BET will agree with. But just let me know what you think. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts, and stay tuned for other recaps and review. Make sure that you check out those playlists. This is a movie and television show recap and review channel but of course, I have several playlists, different things. Check out the health and wellness playlist. Check out other shows, Insecure, Greenleaf, um, Wu-Tang in American Saga, Star Trek, Picard. I have such a broad playlist that you can look at. Binge watch, stay safe. Let me know what you thought in the comments. If you agree, if you disagree, if you say, Bunny, I don't know what you're talking about. That was pure trash. Tell me that, but also consider everything that I discussed with you now and let me know if your opinions changed after you saw it. But I do want you all to look at the show if you haven't yet and think of those notes that I was talking about as you're viewing to let me know your thoughts. Okay, until next time, be safe. I'll see you. Bye.